So, who ruled in medieval England? Kings? Barons? Well, that's one answer. But if you went back in time and asked any medieval man or woman who has the greatest power, they'd have all said the same. God. Medieval England was a Christian country. People believed in life after death. And the church had power because it taught that only through the church in this life would your soul be with God in the next. So people went to church and did what the church told them to do. And they paid the church a tenth of all they owned, a tithe. And it made the church rich and powerful. I'm driving the route of a medieval pilgrim's trail. A pilgrimage is a journey you make to a place of spiritual importance. Muslims these days, for instance, might make a pilgrimage to Mecca. They call it the Hajj. Well, in medieval England, the most popular place of pilgrimage was Canterbury Cathedral. And along the route, you can't fail to notice the sheer number of medieval churches. There's one in almost every village. A sixth of the population of medieval England were priests or monks or nuns or clerks. And these people were all outside the king's control. They obeyed their bishops and the pope in Rome. The king couldn't touch them. Kings, like anyone, worshipped and feared God, and so they lavished on the church gifts of money and land. And the church, in return, taught them the ideal of the good king. But just as there were tensions between kings and the barons, so too there were tensions between kings and the church. King John's father, Henry II, for instance, hated the fact that clerks who'd broken the law could hide behind the protection of the church. He wanted them tried in his royal courts. And this place, Canterbury Cathedral, was where those tensions between church and state reached a climax. A friend of Henry's called Thomas Becket was made Archbishop of Canterbury. And Henry was delighted because he thought Becket would help bring the church under the king's control. Instead, Becket tried to prove himself the best archbishop ever, sticking up for the rights of the church, infuriating his old friend. Until Henry lost his temper, and he called out, who will rid me of this troublesome priest? And four knights overheard him, and they rode to Canterbury. This was the place where the knights confronted Becket. He was struck to the ground with four blows of the sword, and the last blow took off the top of his head, and one of the knights used his sword to smear his brains across the cathedral flags. The church took Becket's story and turned it into a cautionary tale against the power of tyrannical kings. Canterbury became rich as pilgrims came to pray at Becket's shrine. And if ever a king dared to question the power of the church, the ghost of Becket was always there to keep him in check. And the church continued unchallenged for another 400 years. <laughs>